This is a BloomerBoomer.com podcast with host Andy Asher. Well, hi, everyone. I hope your week is going okay. You know, a little while back, we told you about Boomer Travel Patrol. Now, it's a place you can find online and is basically made up of a group of folks who know a lot about traveling, except these folks are super specialists. You know, everything such as airline travel. Now, this isn't just coming from the mouth of a frequent flyer, but this is from a working flight attendant who, at age over 60, flies the world for an international airline. We have food, They have food experts hotel experts, people who travel with pets, right down to the nitty-gritty of traveling for baby boomers. And they put all this together for those of us who want to plan a trip somewhere. So our guest today is Liz Dahl. She's in charge of Hotel Patrol. Well, thanks, Liz. So you have been a travel agent and maybe even better. You know hotels, don't you? Yeah, I've stayed at my fair share of nice hotels. I've stayed at my fair share of medium hotels. And um, I try not to talk about the not-so-nice ones. <laughs> well, you can share those experiences uh, from uh, your standpoint, maybe help others uh, stay away from those places. But... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, on the site, I don't, you know, we, we kind of do like a review and give you an idea, like uh, as, for, as far as my uh, part of it as Hotel Patrol. Um, what I try to do is, give you an idea of a nice hotel, and we usually stay in the three, four, and five-star range. I try not to do anything below that. There are probably some great little spots like that, but, you know, those are so iffy, and they can close at any moment. And uh, so, you know, we try to stay with things that are current, but try not to do anything lower than a three-star hotel. And, of course, travelers' budgets uh, span the spectrum from... uh some of us who uh, are on a tight budget and others who have uh, money to waste. Well, and, that, and that's, that's the point. That's why, you know, when, at the end of each of my articles, I, you get the star rating, either three, four, and five star. I don't tend to put in what the nightly rates are because they vary and they can change. So, uh, but we do immediately give a link to that particular hotel that I've recommended and you can go on the site, and then you can get the information uh, by calling them directly or, you know, trying to book particular dates online. Uh, as you know, everything depends on supply and demand, time of the year, all of those things. So uh, three-star hotels generally uh, are, very, are very moderate, usually clean, um, probably a nice location, but missing some of the bells and whistles. The four- and five-star hotels usually have the most bells and whistles, and, of course, the five-star, you expect, you know, the best service and um, all the great amenities. Okay, so give us an idea, Liz, of uh, of a place that you might recommend that uh, a traveler can go and have fun. Mexico is always uh, a good bet uh, for a lot of people, and uh, what happens especially when you go to Mexico, there are a lot of tour companies that will package it along with charter airfares. So there are lots of ways to get into hotels and perhaps get a deal. Now, as baby boomers, what I always suggest is to try to travel off-season because we tend to have a little more time. Many are retired. So there's no reason to try to go right at the peak season. Like Europe is June, July, and August. If you can stay away from those months and go in like September, October, and then early spring, the prices will be lower, crowds will be less, you'll be able to get more value for your money. So there are so many factors. It's really hard to to answer a question like, "Here's, here's a great hotel and here's what you can expect to pay, because there are so many factors involved. But New York is one of my favorite cities. I used to live there. I love going there. It's full of uh, excitement and um, energy. Oh, yes, New York is great, but as I always uh, tell people who haven't been there, it's best to go on an expense account. <laughs> but my point is it can be a really pricey place. They, they absolutely have to be prepared. But there are some interesting places. Like if you go on the website and you'll see one of the hotels, there's a couple hotels that I happen to recommend in New York. And... Um, one of them is called the Casablanca, and it is right in the middle of Times Square, which is, you know, the, the place to be. What's nice about that hotel, 
you know, the, and again, the rates will be determined by, you know, the time that you decide to go. Obviously, if you're going to go Christmas shopping, <laughs> uh, the, the, the rates are going to be much higher. But one of the wonderful things about this hotel is that there are so many complimentary things which you do not find in a lot of the hotels. Uh, they provide free bottled water in your room. They provide free Wi-Fi. They have a complimentary breakfast every morning. And they have a complimentary wine and cheese every afternoon from 5 to 8. And then all day long there's coffee, tea, fruit, and cookies available. There's a complimentary New York Times post and daily news. They offer free health club passes. So that is something you may pay, you know, a, a fairly premium price, but you are getting way more value for your money. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Just to, fabulous? Yeah, just to give a baseline, uh, uh, so we have a starting point, uh, mm -hmm. can you just give uh, some ranges uh, that would be helpful to understand uh, what someone needs to prepare for? Yeah, in New York, I would say you you will have to be in the... $250 a night and above to get anything decent. And 250 is rare to find. So it's, it's a pricey city. <laughs> it absolutely is a pricey city. But London is pricier. Paris is pricier. But there are other things you can do. For instance, uh, recently I booked um, a client of mine into an apartment in Paris. Uh, so there are ways to get around the hotel. Now, obviously, you don't have some of the amenities that a hotel offers, but there are so many other advantages. There's also a great place in Paris called A Room in Paris, and it's a couple of guys that have this beautiful home uh, in Paris, and you can literally book a room. So it's like a bed and breakfast type of situation, and it's, uh, it's within walking distance of many things, you also have uh, the owners that are able to guide you to, you know, some of the interesting things that you may not find uh, just as a normal tourist staying in a hotel. So there are, you know, there are just so many options. And that's one of the reasons, uh, Andy, that I started this website is because, especially as baby boomers, I just didn't feel like we were given the options and the range of uh places and uh, travel areas because they tend to box us in as cruisers and tour people. And those things are great, too. Please do not get me wrong, because tours can be fabulous, and cruises are fabulous for those that, that love that. But it seems like when they're advertising to us, that's what they're advertising. They're not really giving us a, a range of other ideas because if you're if you're a baby boomer and you love to travel you've more than likely done all of those typical types of trips that you see advertised now you um, presented some new options that are available such as staying in, in people's rooms and so forth and I know that's becoming uh, a very very popular especially with the Airbnb and uh, some of the others uh, that's uh, another option isn't it it is. I'm not a big fan of the Airbnb, uh, mainly because I, I'm not sure about the regulation. I tend to be more of a bed and breakfast kind of person, you know, um, something that has uh, a track record. Uh, uh, there are just too many crazy things going on in this world, and uh, I personally feel a little safer uh, staying with something that has a track record of some sort. So you would advise uh, not going that direction for people pl booking their trip? I, you know, that's a personal preference, and mine would be not to do that, yes. And people who are traveling um, on more of a budget, um, I, I suppose there's really no other way around it than uh, maybe you just have to say, well, you know, New York or, or London or, or isn't, isn't in our plans. We need to look elsewhere. Is well, that... That's actually not true because also if you go to the website, <laughs> I have some other options that are available, and they tend to, and they are for the fifty and over set. One is called the Evergreen Club of North America. Have you heard of that? Tell tell us all about that, would you please, Liz? That would yeah. be great to know. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a bed and breakfast with a twist. <laughs> uh, it's it's called the Evergreen Club. It's for people over fifty. And it caught my eye because 
the company has been around for over 30 years. It was started by this woman's mother, and now the daughter has taken over. Um, it's, it's a people-to-people kind of thing that you, they set up in their own home, a spare guest room that includes breakfast. And they have 2,500 member locations across the U.S. and Canada. Uh, they've added some locations in the United Kingdom, Germany, and Spain. So it's something that you join. There's an annual membership fee of $75. Uh, your host provides a guest room and breakfast, and the suggested length of stay is about three nights, you know, about how long you would want to have a house guest. And uh, they, they, offer, they ask for a standard gratuity to the homeowners of $10 for a single and $15 for a double per day. And um, they give you up-to-date details regarding the accommodations, the host's interests and hobbies, amenities, bed size, and so forth. So they try to match up the guests properly. And the hosts are required to provide clean accommodations, a hearty breakfast, and good conversation. So they share the knowledge of their area and allow you to explore on your own. So they don't really offer any tours. They don't take you around. But they offer you, you know, room and board, basically. And... um, kind of a, a more intimate experience. So I guess it's sort of like the Airbnb, except it's been around a lot longer. It's geared to people 50 and over, and it's a little more um, monitored, shall we say. Wow, that's and phenomenal. So you, so, so you only would pay $75 a year, and then, then when you go traveling, you, could, you spend 10 yes, to $15 so a night? Is that, is that per person, or how does that work? Yes. Per person, yeah, it's not a commercial venture, so you're not going to get wine tastings and you know other guests to mingle with like a bed and breakfast. But you do have a host, and um, and if you're, it's really personal. If you don't like your experience, they'll full refund your membership dues. So it's a win-win. And how does someone find out more about joining it's, that? It's on my website uh, under hotel in, in Hotel Patrol, and it's listed as. Evergreen Club North America. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just on the site right now. So, uh, so they just... Uh, um, and they can, they can read about it and click on their website. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. And they, I mean, it's, it, there's so many options. Uh, it, and and see, you, so you see, you're, you know, this is something you've not heard of, right? And I'm sure you've, you've traveled, and they've been around for 30 years, you know? And that's, that's the point. I'm trying to find these little nuggets out there to give you options, and now that's that's a budget way to go. So again, that would be kind of a three star experience versus a five star experience. So what's the first step uh, you know someone should take uh, when they're getting ready to uh, plan the trip and uh, find a place to stay? Well, hopefully they'll come to our website, <laughs> boomertravelpatrol.com, dot uh, com, and and do their research. You can search. For places like in, in at the top of the page where it says search, say you're going to Chicago, you can put in Chicago, and then all the articles we've written about Chicago will pop up. Um, and so, I think that's a, you know the first step is to just do some research. Um, then we have a destination section that you can click on uh, the area. And one of the things I like to do too when I'm reviewing the hotels is tell you a little bit about the things you can do in the area to take advantage of not just staying at the hotel, but see what else is offered uh, around you. And, you know, locations are important. There's so many factors into making a decision on travel. Um, and, and it's so personal, Andy, because everyone has different expectations. You know, as a, as a travel agent as well, uh, you almost have to be a psychologist because people say, oh, I want to go somewhere warm. Well, then as you start talking to them, you find out, well, they don't really like to, they don't like to get their feet wet or they don't like sand. You know, <laughs> different things pop up and you think, hmm, probably not a good choice. Let's, let's go in another direction. So you really need to think about what, what your likes are. You know, first of all, where do you want to go? Uh, what is it that you want to see? What do you want to do? What do you want to experience? Are you a a city person? I mean, do you love to just go to theater and great restaurants and do sightseeing? Or are you someone that just wants to be laid back and do absolutely nothing, just sit on a beach somewhere and read a book? You know, you have to really think about it because travel is not cheap. So 
it's a, you, you're spending your hard-earned money, and you really want to do some research, and that's what's great about our site. You can research everything, you know, from areas to hotels to, you know, if you're traveling with your pets, whatever. So it need, you do need to sit down and really evaluate what it is that you want out of the experience, because for me, travel is an experience. And how about senior discounts? Do most of the hotels offer that? Many do, and, and I'm glad you asked about that because there are, you know, I, we also have a tip section, and I've offered some hotel tips. The best way that I know, besides working with your travel agent, because travel agents are, are very good and they've got a lot of experience and they have a lot of contacts, but if you want to do it on your own, what I recommend is going um, and calling the hotel directly. And here's, here's a couple of things. Number one, the first thing you ask is how much a night for whatever days you're staying, okay? Then say, I'd like to have your best rate because, A, they will never quote their lowest rate to you. They'll quote their, their rack room rate. So you have to actually know to ask for the best rate available. Now, if you're military, retired or otherwise, or you belong to AARP or AAA or any organization, they also offer discounts for that. So you need to ask a lot of questions. Don't just accept the first answer. And don't call their 800 number because those are just reservationists sitting in front of a computer. They don't have leeway. But if you call the front desk of the hotel directly and ask for reservations, you're going to get a different and better rate, chances are. And how about uh, going online, uh, booking your hotels online? Uh, they're they're uh, they're supposed to supposed to give you some reduced rates uh, by booking online. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So I would suggest trying both options. You know, I, I would suggest going online, seeing what rates are available, because sometimes they say uh, this rate is good online only. And usually, if it says that, they're probably lower than any others. But I would certainly. Know what you know what that is, but then call the hotel directly and see if you can get a better rate. I mean, it's a game. <laughs> well, great, Liz. As uh, as we wind up here, uh, you've given us some great tips. Uh, anything else that uh, you uh, you know, a good top tip that only you would know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you kind of a thing that you know I, I always recommend, and um, it's not that I'm really a germaphobe, but you know, you never know when you go into hotels. I always tell people when you go into your like bathroom and whatever, if there are glass, if there's glassware there, and they also have plastic cups, you use the plastic cups because you do not know if and how the glassware has been washed. You know, we've actually seen videos of people using like Lysol and different sprays on the on the glassware, and some just not doing it at all. They just put something over it. So. Um, always use your plastic cups, even if you're a snob about using plastic. <laughs> well, very good. Well, Liz, I appreciate uh, the time, and uh, it's been real informative. Thanks so much, Andy. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thanks for listening to our BloomerBoomer.com podcast. We provide transcripts for most of our podcasts, and you can also access all of our podcasts on iTunes. Oh, and we encourage you to leave a comment in the podcast reply.